One of the big new features of the M5 iPad Pro is its support for driving an external display at up to 120 frames per second. Up to this point, the iPad Pro and iPad Air could only drive an external monitor at a flat 60 hertz. So this video is going to be a quick walkthrough of what the improvement to external display support looks like on the new iPad Pro. So assuming you have an M5 iPad Pro and you have a external monitor that supports a high refresh rate, something like 120 hertz, you'll need one of two things. Best case scenario, your monitor has a USB-C port which generally means it supports DisplayPort Alt Mode over USB and means you can just plug it into the iPad Pro and in theory this should just work. If you're like me and your monitor doesn't have a USB-C port, you will need either a DisplayPort cable or adapter, which should support DisplayPort 1.4 or newer, or an HDMI cable or adapter, which should support HDMI 2.1. I'll note at this point, I was unable to get over 60 Hertz on my monitor using HDMI. The adapter I used claimed to support HDMI 2.1 and it was from a reputable brand. Your mileage may vary on HDMI. What I wonder here is if we're running into an issue that apparently exists on the Mac based on the research I did where the USB-C ports on MacBooks may or may not support HDMI 2.1 when you're using an adapter. This could be what we're seeing here. I'm not 100%. I'll put a link to the blog post about it in the description if you're interested, but just wanted to call that out. I ended up using this DisplayPort to USB-C cable that supported DisplayPort 1.4 and advertises 4K up to 240 hertz. I generally prefer a cable to an adapter, so that's why I went that way. This particular cable is from Ugreen and I'll have a link to it in the description if you're interested. So once I take the cable and plug it into the display port on the monitor and plug it into the iPad, that should be it, right? Well, it should be, but it wasn't for me. For me, I was getting 4K just fine, but only at 60 Hertz. To troubleshoot this, I actually had to go back to my Windows PC. The monitor I have supports something like 240 something Hertz at 4K. And it's actually the refresh rate I run it at on my Windows PC mostly just because I can. So I went into my display settings and noticed there actually wasn't an option to set the resolution to 4K and have the refresh rate be 120 Hertz. I could go over that, I could go under that, but I couldn't hit 120 Hertz. The only way I could get to 120 was actually by lowering the resolution to 1080p, which meant everything was humongous. So I wasn't gonna do that. I'll save you all the trial and error I went through figuring this out. But for this monitor, I had to go into the monitor settings itself. So general input compatibility version, I think it is. And I had a couple different versions of DisplayPort I could choose from. What it defaulted to was DisplayPort 1.4 parentheses DSC. DSC is Display Scale Compression, which is an algorithm that basically makes it so you can drive higher resolution, higher refresh rate signals over DisplayPort, ideally without losing a bunch of quality. For my purposes, ended up having to turn that off, so I switched it just to 1.4, and when you know, when I plugged it back into the iPad, I had 4K 120. So let's take a quick look at the settings that are enabled now that I'm attached to this high refresh rate monitor. So I'll go into settings and display and brightness, and then tap on the display itself here. First thing you'll see is display zoom, which gives you some basic scaling options. I wish there were more here, but that's what we have. Now let's drill into advanced. So you have a few settings you can change here. The preferred display setting would let you enable or disable HDR. I've yet to find a PC monitor that supports HDR in a way that doesn't look terrible. So I'm just gonna leave this off. Adaptive Sync, since I'm using a gaming monitor, it supports variable refresh rate. And this option lets you toggle that from the iPad side. Adaptive Sync works similarly to ProMotion on the iPad display itself, where it can vary the refresh rate of the display based on what is going on at the moment. If it's fast moving action, it can ramp it up. But if there's not much going on, it can ramp it down. It's not quite as aggressive as we have on the Apple devices, but Battery life is not the priority here, so that kind of makes sense. Allow display mode changes. The setting, in theory, 
lets individual apps request different refresh rates or color settings if they need to. I always leave this on. I don't know that it actually does anything for the apps I use, but it doesn't seem to hurt anything. And then, as you might imagine, limit refresh rate locks the refresh rate of your external monitor to 60 hertz if you'd rather do that. So that's going to do it for this one. Just really wanted to give that quick overview of what high refresh rate external display support looks like on iPad OS. As always, if you made it to the end of this video, thank you. I appreciate you and your time. You could like the video if you did and subscribe to the channel. That would help me and the channel out a bunch. And with that, I will catch you in the next one. Thanks and take care.